on today's video, it is my express purpose to teach you absolutely nothing. Enjoy! Hello. I mean, that wasn't even a joke. I really didn't make this video to teach anyone anything. This is actually kind of one of those weird sort of self-serving pleasure videos, I get Not that kind of self-serving pleasure video. <laughs> no, no. The intention here, you might remember quite recently, I did some stuff with Necrons because Indomitus is coming out and I'm really excited for it. And I wanted to kind of explore Necrons a bit. Well, a friend of mine on Twitter, Becky, is also a Necrons player. So shout outs to you. Thank you so much for your part in this video. Um, and she wanted to see a few alternate Necron schemes because the one that I did for the previous video was, you know, it was kind of the the common scheme. I don't know what the dynasty is called, but it's, it's the one we're all used to seeing, you know, the bronze and the silver and the glowy green. And so she wanted to see kind of some alternates, some different things that you could do. So I wanted to cook up a couple of recipes. And the idea behind this video is really just the fun of the creative process of that, just coming up with some color schemes and applying some paint to a couple of miniatures and getting a couple of cool miniatures out of the other end of it. So um, yeah, strap in, sit down, and let's go for a ride into me creating something randomly just for fun. Okay, so to start out with, I've just sprayed these guys silver and non oiled them, much like pretty much all of you will do yourselves. Now, because I'm just chilling with this, I'm gonna give you the rundown of all the colors at once. So graveyard bone, then we've got some Eldritch Purple. That's a beautiful purple. We're going to be highlighting that with Punk Rock Pink. Our next main colour is going to be Naga Green. That's going to be receiving highlights using Alien Goo. And then so that we can tone things off and make things nice and dark, we've got some Solid Black. Let's get started. This is just going to be a big old bulk of time-lapse footage now. Um, you're just going to see me kind of working away, blocking in colours first of all. So black is first on my list. Um, mostly I tend to work in an order where I'm either painting like the deepest recessed stuff first, so that I'm painting detail that kind of goes over it afterwards, or I go in order of kind of highest contrast so I put the neutral tones in first because they don't really mess with the contrast at all and then I start putting the color pairs in so that I can get a good idea of how they balance out on the miniature. So here it just made sense for me to start hammering black in to start off with. It's a nice high coverage black is the old solid black from Reaper so it doesn't take too long to get it done and before we know it we're switching to that purple. I'm just starting to block in all of the areas that I want purple. Now this color this Eldritch purple from Reaper not the best coverage in the world, I'm not going to lie. Um, kind of, uh, I'll be honest, Reaper do a few of these sort of mid-purples, and none of them are great for coverage. But, you know, three coats kind of gets you there, and I'm not too mad at three coats. Like, I don't expect anything to really go on in one coat anyway. So it wasn't a ton of extra work, and it is, it's a very nice purple. It's a very, very nice purple. And once we've got all that blocked in, we can now start on with some green. So this is a good example of what I was saying. This green sits higher on the surface, uh, sorry, deeper into the recess than the black of those tubes around it. So I actually left off painting those black so that I could put the green in first and then paint them black. Uh, other than that, it's the blade under the weapon. The little kind of coily things at the back of the weapon are going to get a coat of green. Some of our cables are going to get a coat of green. His eye. You know, just pick out some nice details and sort of look at how it balances off against your purple. You know, you don't really have to paint or not paint anything, any colour. So instead of thinking about this should be this, this should be that, just look at how it balances with the rest of the miniature. You know, so we've got that dominant purple on the head so let's add a little bit of green just to make that a bit more interesting to look at you know the weapon let's make it predominantly black and green because the necron himself is predominantly black and purple and by thinking about it in terms of how it balances with the miniature itself you end up with these color schemes that just look a lot more poppy you know instead of instead of thinking about things in terms of this should be painted this color because something says so you 
But as you can see, we're hammering through this black pretty quickly just to get this little extra bit done. And now we're going to start highlighting everything. So the highlights for the purple, we start off adding some of that pink into it in about a 50-50 mix and just kind of glazing towards all of the areas where I want more light to catch. Um, and what I, what I tend to do when I'm doing a, a highlight scheme like this, where I want something that's kind of high contrast but still fairly smooth, you know, this is kind of what I would call like a high tabletop standard. So, I, you know, I, want, I still want a degree of smooth. So I'm not going to sit there and work at it like I would a display piece. I'm not going to, you know, really be anal over those blends in order to get them absolutely bang on because this isn't supposed to be a display piece. It's supposed to be just a nice tabletop piece. Um, but I do still want them to look quite nice. So what I'll do is my first couple of highlights, I'll blend those in really gently with glazes. But each time I add more paint to the glaze to brighten it up, I won't add any more thinning agent. So every time the highlights get a little bit brighter, the paint also gets a little bit thicker and a little bit more intense. And what that means is that instead of needing eight or nine stages of glazing to achieve a nice smooth blend, I can get up to something that still looks pretty good, pretty clean, pretty nice, in about four, maybe five at a push stages of blending. So it just speeds that process up a bit more where you can start to call it like a high tabletop, maybe not quite a, a display standard, but it still looks nice, right? We're just sort of making a really bright pink there as well with some of that bone mixed into the alien goo just to catch a few edges. Sorry, not alien goo, punk rock pink. Confusing my colours. We're just catching some of those little edges to make some nice bright glowy parts. Messed that up a few times and had to fix it, that pipe at the back there. Took me a couple of goes to figure out how to draw that curve. He's starting to look nicer. You can already start to see some of that contrast appearing. And now this is where we're gonna get the, the real good stuff going on. So we're starting to blend some of that alien goo. This is actually alien goo this time into that Naga green and start to bring some of those brighter greens through. So this is all again done with glazing at first. And then once it starts to get brighter and look smoother, then we can get a little bit blockier as we get more towards edge highlighting. see around that power generate coily thing as well as I start highlighting that I'm not making an effort to leave the recesses shaded and highlight the the raised parts I'm actually just treating the whole thing almost as if it was a flat object because the idea is that the glow is coming from inside so whilst it is heavily lighting those coils and so the coils themselves want to be highlighted the space in between the coils is actually the source of the highlight, so that also still wants to be highlighted. The light is coming from inside that coil. And you'll see as this starts to get brighter and brighter, it makes more and more sense. point we're uh, we're mixing alien goo with um, some of that bone color I believe to get these sort of brightest last highlights the alien goo just doesn't quite have enough coverage on its own so it does need a bit of a white in it just to just to help it go over and then after all that work this is what we settle on in the end uh, I also off camera actually highlighted all of the black, which was very silly of me. I think I may have just lost the footage. Um, just highlighting a bit of silver there as well, but there you go. There's a little slow the footage down a second so that you can have a proper look. And then. A few moments later. Let's get into the colours for the next one. So, Ezra in Blue to start us off. I know, again, Ezra in Blue, every bloody video. Calador Sky, that's our highlight. Then we're going to grab Leather Brown. This is one that I don't use very often. I wanted to use this as a basis for a warm white. 
into graveyard bone again every bloody video it's always skeleton bone or graveyard bone they are different by the way those two colors pure white next and solid black once again so just a nice tight bunch of staple colors for this workup and the footage is going to be a bit more sped up here just because i don't want it to be repetitive i'm basically going through the same processes but with different colors so first of all i'm getting all the bone in place which is uh, this is actually what that leather brown looks like when it goes on it is practically a bone color to start out with um it looks a lot darker in the bottle than it does when it goes onto the miniature a couple of coats of this first of all Being very careful around the head there, it's got that kind of crenellated pattern at the back of the face cap, uh, face plate thing, and I wanted to keep that crenellated pattern kind of looking cool, so um, made a point of just picking out around it and keeping it nice and well defined. You also know it's not painting in the center plate of the head uh, because I want to put an accent color there. Again, just trying to think about how I want my different volumes of color to stack up against each other. So I don't want too many big expanses of this bony color without any kind of break in it. So the center of the head seemed like a good place to put a nice big blue accent just to break up all of that chunk of bone. Hey, <laughs> chunk of bone. <laughs> You can see it does take a fair few coats here to get this leather brown worked up. Again, it's, it's one of the Reaper paints that is not the best coverage. We have a lot of paints that are really good coverage. This is not really one of them. In fact, if anything, GW Zandri Dust would have been the paint to use here because it would have gone on in like a coat and a half. We'll just start picking out some cables as well like we did on the last one. But again, it's all, it's all very much the same processes that we went through with the last Necron, just with... Uh, different paints. Make sure I go off camera plenty there just to frustrate everybody watching. My apologies. I'm actually starting to build some highlights in here. This is the first stage of highlights going on. Just mix some of that graveyard bone into this color. I'm just starting to work it up onto the highlight areas again. Very similarly to how I did on the last one. Just keep adding more of that graveyard bone as you get brighter and brighter. And then we need to start getting our blues down. Uh, again, I painted the blacks off camera for some reason. Uh, I, this might be the one where I actually remember to highlight them on camera, I think. <laughs> but I blocked them in off camera. Um, and again, with this blue, it's a bit more forgiving, so I could afford to paint those rails black first. There was less chance of me making a fatal mistake that just took ages to clean up. But here we go, basically doing the same things. The blade, the front of the little spiky bits on the gun, those little emanations from the, from the rails. The coil, some of the cables, same sort of distribution again, just picking out some of the cables. And then that accent panel down the middle of the head. Something worth pointing out with this Ezra in blue as well, it does actually have a transparent base. I did notice this when I was painting it over the metal, the first coat, because it was so thin, I actually ended up with sort of a metallic blue. And then it wasn't until I started to cover a few more coats over the top of that that it uh, came to an opaque color. So it's worth bearing in mind if you're playing with Ezra in blue, because it has a transparent base, you can just glaze it over metallics to get a colored, get a blue colored shiny metallic. Now we're starting to highlight some of those blues. I ended up going a little bit more intense with the highlights on the blues. Um, I'm not really sure what prompted me to do that, but I definitely think it was the right call. The blue just being a bit more of a sedate color naturally, I think just pushing it a bit harder towards white um, ended up working in our favor just to, just to create a good bit of punch there. 
Again, all the same principles as the last time. Those coils ended up looking really, really cool in the blue, actually, and it's kind of made me think maybe I want to do, like, the plasma coils on my Blood Angels in this blue workup, because it, it actually, yeah, when I, when I looked at the coils, I really, really liked how it looked. And again, getting brighter and brighter. Just keep working. I went a bit darker again there just to tidy up a bit. I was being a bit messy with the blends. By this point, I'd been painting for a few hours and I was starting to get a little bit ratty with uh, doing the same thing. And then I sort of reminded myself, hang on a minute, this isn't for you. Let's uh, let's stop and go back and correct that. And, you know, just gave myself a quick clip around the ear and got my concentration head back on and made it look pretty. Now we're starting to get up into our brighter highlights. Initially, I did add Graveyard Bone here as the highlight color, but I do end up starting to push more towards the pure white, um, just for that extra bit of punch. some more of those little slashy patterns. I really like doing that on blended blades. If you're quick blending them, adding those little slashy patterns just kind of breaks up your blending a bit and makes you, like you don't have to be as neat with the blending. So if you're just trying to do it quickly, say if you want to have like blended power weapons on an entire army, for example, then those little cross slashes just allow you to be a bit more, a bit more careless with your blends essentially and it doesn't end up looking shit as a result. So that's a nice little tip if you're just trying to sort of mass produce blended uh, blades. And again, we're just keeping to go brighter and brighter and brighter. At this point now, we're basically at white with just the slightest little taint of blue in it. and then a few dots of actual pure white. And these really are just tiny little dots. And a bit into the coils as well. There we go. So what are our chaps looking like when they're all done? Well, they're looking something like this. Side by side, they're pretty cool. Um, I think for me, the one that catches my eye more is the blue and bone one. Um, but probably more because I don't see those two colors paired up very often. Whereas purple and green, obviously, they're a very common pairing. Uh, they work wicked together though. They're both super cool. And uh, the person they were painted for really likes them. So good news all round. And that's the net result. Pretty cool, I think. Uh, I really like the way the purple and green one has the kind of original tie-ins there to to the green glowiness of the original color scheme, albeit, albeit in you know a slightly different presentation. But then that purple acting as a nice accent to that it sort of really sets it off well. Um, it kind of, for some reason, weirdly reminds me of blackcurrant squash. You know, the kind of green of the vine leaves and the purple of the currants. But like inspiration comes from everywhere, right? So so that's fine. Let's put that one to one side. Um, the other one, the blue and bone one, or the one that I have um, I have decided to nickname the blue boner. That's apparently how my brain works. Uh, again, same thing. Like really punchy colours. A nice sort of exchange between that sort of slightly warm toned whitey bony kind of colour, and then that really cool toned blue. Love the way those two colours interplay. 
I hope you guys enjoyed it too. I really do because that was just that was just a whole bunch of me having some fun with some miniatures that I liked and just doing something cool for a friend. So uh, if you enjoyed the video, then please do click like. Feel free to leave a comment below and please do subscribe to the channel. It really helps me get seen. Until then, folks, I'll be back next week with more. So I'll see you in the next one.